Hi, welcome back to the Polymer Clay channel. It's lovely to have you here. I'm going to make a hedgehog today. It's going to be part of the Clay Zoo series. Uh, this has been requested by one of my subscribers and I actually haven't made one before so I thought I'd give it a try and at the same time help everybody else learn how to do it. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, so I've got everything set up as I normally do. I'm just going to go through everything um, and then I'll make a start. So this is for FIMO Professional and this is Beige 44. This is out of its packet but it is chocolate number 9. FIMO Soft in black and this is FIMO Soft in cherry red. It's a really nice colour this one, cherry red, I do love it. Okay, so moving on to the mica powders and the glitter. I've only got a couple out this time and they're going to be coordinating colours. So these two are from the Colour Shack, my favourite place. Uh, this is Copper and this one is Chateau. So they're the mica powders. The glitters I've got are bright red, pink and bronze. And now I've got a little blusher set. What I intend to do with the blusher set is give the cheeks of the uh, hedgehog a little bit of shine a little bit of uh, character and then uh, the little pads on the feet as well okay so i do have a tools video but i'll just quickly go through these but i will link it in the description below okay so these are my uh, dotting tools tissue blade can't do without that this is my fimo smoothing tools really good uh, for making bump marks in fimo craft knife paintbrush and lastly a little cocktail stick what i'm going to do with that is uh, make the eye marks with it. Cocktail sticks are really good for that. Um, they make a really good sharp mark and I, when I make my bears I always use a cocktail stick for the eyes. I don't actually normally make um, any sort of dots or anything like that. So this is really good. Okay, so I'm gonna make a start now. Okay, I'm gonna start with a fine mode professional. Always start with a lighter color first, particularly if you're gonna make something all at once. Um, it does save your hands but I would suggest if you do go from brown to this colour make sure you wash your hands. Okay so I'm just going to cut a little bit of this off. So I'm going to start to condition and you do this by pressing between uh, both hands and getting it nice and warm. I find that the pressing motion works really well rather than going straight in for the roll. Um, I do this once I can get this into a bit of a, a shape. Um, get it nice and warm. The polymer clay will actually make your hands really dry because it takes the oils from your hands to actually condition. So it's not just heat, it's actually the oils as well. So it's quite important to keep those hands moisturised. <laughs> Okay, so it's nice and conditioned on the outside, but I do have a little trick. I like to call it turning it inside out. Cut it into quarters and literally do just that. And what this does is then conditions the clay that would have been on the inside on the outside. Once you've got it to a point that you can roll it out to a long shape, keep going with it because you know that it's almost there in terms of conditioning. So I'm just going to roll that now. And then I like to fold it back on itself, twist it up as much as you can, and that's the conditioning done once you've got it back into a ball. Okay, this is ready to go now. So I'm going to start pressing in the middle and create almost like an oblong shape with a little bit of a dip to it on the inside. your hand's got a natural dip here it's actually quite simple to do it like this it doesn't matter too much on the outside at the moment it's more on the inside I want to make sure it's nice and conditioned and now I'm just looking for the general shape now what I'm doing here is creating the inside of the hedgehog um, so basically where his feet is going to go his head and his little um, his little front paws as well so what I'm looking for is a dip in the middle. So I'm looking for something that I can put all of those little features in um, and get the right shape at the same time. So I want to have a 
a little point here to the bottom end a little bit wider here and then again a little bit smaller here this will also determine how big it is as well so just to give you an idea here's about palm size or will be at the moment anyway okay fully aware that that does look really weird at the moment but I'm just going to set that aside for now and then I'm just gonna uh, make the face so with this um, I would put pressure on one end and not the other and that would give me a nice point for his nose Okay, so as you saw, I've cut quite a bit off and then made the edges nice and soft and then I pushed his nose in a little bit, I don't know if you can probably see that's a better angle and gave it a little turn up as well. I will be popping a little brown dot on the end there, so just to give you an idea, that's where his face is going to start. So actually I might just pop him a bit further up, now I'm going to make big feet. <laughs> Okay, these are going to be the feet, so I've just made them into an oblong sort of shape, my palm for the sort of size of it, and I'm just going to press down. Okay, so I've just gave the feet a little bit of character, a little bit of movement. So I've brought the toes in, or this part where the toes will be, um, a little bit, and turned them inside a bit as well to give them, as I said, a little bit of character. And uh, hopefully that looked quite sweet. So I'm going to do the front paws now. So I've made some front paws. Um, I've made like a teardrop shape, so they're wider on the uh, top than the bottom and that gives uh, the ability to be able to sort of push it right in. And I'm just going to pop some lines in for the claws. Okay, what I've done here is rolled out a long line and I've got two um, little bigger pieces here and then lots of little ones. The reason why I've done lots is that if I find that the uh, sizes aren't quite right I can just move on to the next one or perhaps pop a couple together and what I'm actually going to do is the paws and um, the little prints on the feet here so that's what I'm doing next. Okay I've just made these ones um, bigger just bear in mind that the amount of clay that you use will depend on the, the size of it but also don't forget the thickness as well. So you could use more clay and then have a thicker one but make it smaller and vice versa. Okay, so based on the fact that I had to double up the amount I used from what I cut here, I'm going to double these up as well. So each one I'm going to use two together and see what that gets me. Rolled out some little balls. I've made a lot more than I need and the reason why I always do that is because it's really frustrating if you've made all the great sized perfect balls and then you need more. So I've made a lot and I'm just going to place them on. So I'm just going to use the end of my craft knife and just press them down a little bit. Not too much because I think they still look quite sweet with a little bit of um, depth there. Um, a little bit of 3D sort of effect just get them into the shape you're looking for if you want more little paws more little balls go ahead um, I think three looks quite cute and I like the way that it looks there so I'm just going to lift this up a little bit here just to give it a little bit of curve 
it's really hard sometimes to get um, feet and hands to match or paws and paws to match um, but do your best you know it's art so it could be re-rolled okay so you'll notice I've got three balls that are flattened here and then some rather strange little balls next to it this is my little trick to see what kind of face um, I want to put on something so firstly I'm going to do this one and this is with a cocktail stick so I'm just going to make two little lines no other no other detail and then just pop it over and just see what it looks like now what this does is give you an idea of what the face will look like with a certain mark in it obviously what you don't want to do is have to pull all this out um, and re-smooth it out if you don't like it so this is my way of checking it so I'm not too sure about that one this one's slightly different so I'm going to put firstly I'm going to make two dips like this almost looks like a pig nose and then in there now what this does is gives it a nice rim so then you would be able to put little dots in there and it gives the impression of a little eyeball so there's the other way that you could do the eyes and then just look on here that does actually look quite cute I think that will work the other way is just to make two little simple dots and pop them straight on and they look equally as good as well I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to go for but I think I did actually prefer a mixture of the two you might prefer this it really does depend on what you want the um, hedgehog to look like and what sort of look you want him to have and also don't forget you could position the eyes in a different way as well so for example you could put one eye going one way and one eye going the other and you'd have a bit of a silly look so you can make them look a bit more humorous if you if you want to. So I quite like this look, so I'm going to go ahead with that. So his eyes are on now, I think it's got quite a sweet look. I have put the eyes further apart, um, so I think they look better like that than really close together. And I'm now going to do the brown part at the back. I'm just going to give you a bit of a zoom in here. Um, I did have to redo this. <laughs> These things do happen sometimes. So what happened was, is when I popped the brown around the outside, um, it was really flat on the back still, so it just wasn't working. So I've come up with a new plan and I've remade it. These things happen. Um, so it doesn't have his little dots in his eyes yet because they might roll off. So I'll show you how to do this next. So place it into the palm of your hand and then with a ball tool or something that you could sculpt and just bring out the middle part of the brown clay to the outside creating a bit of a crater really <laughs> okay so what I've got now is a bit of a dome shape so it's going to be fairly hollow on the inside this works for two reasons the weight of it because obviously FIMO is fairly heavy so if this was solid if the background was solid um, it would be a lot heavier um, so I'm just gonna pop that in here now what I'm doing here is gently folding the brown clay around the features of the hedgehog but I'm being careful not to make sure um, it's uneven. That's where it sort of went wrong before. So I've learned something there myself. A bit of patience and it all comes together. So 
and I've said on one of my other videos as well I'm not frightened of rolling up and starting again and yes it does get annoying and but I don't lose any kind of sleep over it really um, I've actually got a little bit of glitter in here I'm just going to get rid of that because it's too early for glitter okay so we're getting somewhere now so now what we have is more of a rounded shape and the back of it was really flat so it just wasn't going to work so as I said I've learnt something so I like to learn and then I like to teach so I brought that round now so it's encased now in brown which looks really cool okay brilliant so now what I'm going to do with this long piece here I'm going to cut some spikes these all look like little chocolate drops now okay so with um, the little spiky bit pinch and hold in your, into your middle finger well sorry your finger and your thumb and just create a rounded point Now the idea of these little triangles is it just gives you a basis to start with. So rather than getting a ball and working out the sizes and things like that, you know that these are all going to be roughly the same sort of size. So with the small triangle, pinch between your fingers here, roll slightly, flatten, roll again, flatten, and you'll find that it naturally becomes a little point and it's really easy that way. Um, I would do it that way rather than roll a load of balls. <laughs> so I'm just putting all the spikes in here and then I'm going to do the next layer here as well. But when I do get to around the back, these are going to be done differently. Okay, so I've got the little hedgehog out of the oven, so he's nice and uh, hardened now. So what I'm going to do is the rest of this um, with these soft spikes. So these are the ones I've cut out and I literally made a long log like this and cut out triangles. With the triangle, squash and press until you get a more softer edge. And then with that, press it on. So that's how I've got those. So what I'm going to do is pop the rest of the spikes on now. But now this part's hardened. I don't have to worry about holding it like this. Whereas before it was a bit of a struggle because I had to make sure the features of the hedgehog didn't squash and also some of the spikes as well on the front. So I think I've done not too bad a job making sure they all stay, stay stuck up. But now I'm going to do it this way round. So I've noticed these aren't sticking quite as well as I'd like them to and I keep knocking them. So um, this is classic FIMO, so that's probably one of the reasons why it's not as tacky and they possibly are going to keep falling off. So um, to stop that from happening, what I've got here is some liquid FIMO. Love this stuff, it's brilliant. Get a little bit on a long instrument and then just pop it where you're going to put your little decoration. And then pop one on and it should hold it until it's baked so I think I'm actually going to do the rest with, with that sort of technique I've also noticed his eyes fell off but don't worry I'll sort that out in just a minute
Okay, so now I've got the hedgehog covered all the way around. I now have to be careful again because all these spikes are soft. And the reason why you do these ones first is so that you've got more of a base to hold on to when you do the rest of them here. So what I'm going to do now is unfortunately pop the hedgehog face down and I'm just going to add the mica powders now. I'm having to be quite gentle um, with the mica powders. Um, the little spikes on the back are only held in place by the liquid FIMO and of course it being gooey still um, it's going to move them still so just being quite careful and really not putting too much pressure on them but what I want is a little bit of highlight um, on the spikes and just sort of an overall glossier more bronzy look and then I'll move on to the um, more goldy colours just for the tips like I did on the front. I'm not going to say it wasn't hard <laughs> um, because it was. It took a little bit of working out how to do the front and then hold on to the hedgehog and not squash it and things like that. So with the research that I've done, uh, I recommend um, doing the front first and then the spikes after. Also having the spikes prepared as well. So cut them out have them nice and soft as well, ready to go. Um, with each of these, um, I press them, cut them out, and then I press them. So they're, so they're sharp, but they've got like a little triangle look to them as well. So um, I didn't want to make them too sharp because I thought they were, they were nice like that. But if you wanted to make them really sharp, you can make them longer as well or bigger. Um, I just like the way this looked. So I'm just going on round here getting as much of the the shimmer going on now FIMO does look great without mica powder you don't have to add it at all if you don't have mica powder use a bit of eyeshadow um, eyeshadow can be a bit more dense uh, mica powder is really really um, soft um, and separates easy whereas um, eyeshadow doesn't so you need to sort of break up a little bit first rather than dipping it dip, dipping your paintbrush right into the um, the eyeshadow okay so I'm holding on to him with the hardened part of the spikes here I'm desperately hoping that I haven't moved any of these ones here um, so I popped a little bit of glitter in just to highlight I think that looks really sweet and I'm going to pop them in the oven upside down so this way round on a small tile and bake the rest thanks for watching the tutorial what did you think? Um, I had a lot of fun, the spikes were really hard I've got to say they weren't easy you have to start with uh, this the front area and then the back area here's a little show of him now so all the way around he's got all of his spikes there's no flat areas at all and then he's got a really sweet look um, the coloring here on his feet was just a little makeup I'm not too sure what to do with him I might make a base for him um, and then personalize him put someone's name on birthday present maybe um, so tell me what you think in the comments um, as I said he wasn't easy to do so you have a lot of patience particularly with all the little spikes if you wanted to get away with uh, not as much work make the spikes bigger um, and then you wouldn't have to do all that uh, next time I think I'll make all of these a bit more spiky as well so there's going to be another hedgehog I know there is because I did have fun but like I said it was quite time consuming but you know, that's polymer clay and that's what we do. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do because I would really, really appreciate it. I am growing my YouTube channel at the moment, so all your support is completely welcomed and truly appreciated. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on something uh, in particular, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, blah, blah, blah.
leave me a comment. See what you think. Brilliant. Why don't I practice what I'm going to say first? Thank you.